Welcome to episode two of Youth Week of Prayer 2021. I do hope you enjoyed our last session, but tonight we continue with a youth presenter, Theola Williams, and her topic, Lord, I will go, fill me. And that is what we want for you tonight, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So again, I ask you, are you ready to go? Hi, my name is Dr. Angeline Joseph Schillingford, and I'm here as the president of the Ashley Schillingford Foundation for Positive Living. I'm gonna be speaking to you about coping with depression. Depression is kind of a word that not a lot of people like to talk about. It's something that we kind of know exists and it happens, but not a lot of people are willing to admit that it's something that's happened to them. But depression and other mental health issues are extremely common and due to what's happened recently what's been going on with the world the incidence of depression has actually skyrocketed especially in younger people so we want to talk today about how you can actually cope with depression if it's something that you're struggling with or something that you've noticed in someone that's close to you so the first thing we want to say is that Depression is something that happens to most people at some point in their lives. So it's something not to be ashamed of, but it's something that you want to work on, you want to confide in somebody else, let them know how you're feeling and get help if you need. So when you're feeling down, there'll be days when you just feel like you're in a fog, you don't wanna get out of bed, you're not enjoying anything, you, you don't wanna do stuff that you used to do. It's important that you reach out and stay connected with those who are close to you. So depression is something that you don't wanna be trying to deal with on your own and you need as much support as you can. So you wanna to talk to somebody, talk to your friend, talk to your mom, your dad, talk to your cousin, just make sure that somebody's aware of how you're feeling. And then set things up to help you to be able to connect with other people. So it might be that you go for a long walk with somebody, you meet them down at the beach just to sit down and look at the sea, you meet up for um, a smoothie, just anything that will help you to get out and to stay in touch with people. The next step is do things that make you feel good. So ironically, it's almost something that we're asking to do that you don't really want to do because of how you're feeling. So most people who are depressed just want to stay at home in their pajamas, you know, feeling sad, not feeling like doing the stuff that they used to. But it's important to try to make yourself come out of your shell and do things that you don't feel like doing that will make you feel good at the end of the day. So for myself and my family, we recently lost my teenage daughter uh, a little few months ago now um, with a sudden illness and she was 14 when she passed and because of how she died, the, the pain and the grief and the depression was real and it's something that we never expected. But one of the things that helped us was actually music. So myself and my sister would put on Alexa and we'll tell her play Jesus you love me too much oh and we'll dance around the house in our pajamas we'll scream at the top of our lungs sometimes we'll be laughing sometimes we'll be crying we'll be looking silly stupid but it was something that made us feel good even though our pain was so great so think of what you enjoy do you enjoy looking at nature do you enjoy reading do you enjoy having a good nap having a fancy bubble bath whatever it is playing sports Get someone to come with you if you don't feel like doing it by yourself and just make do, do things that make you feel good. The other thing to make sure you do is just to keep moving. So as I said, for most of us when we're depressed, we don't want to go anywhere, we don't want to see anyone, we just want to be by ourselves and be left alone. But exercising actually helps promote hormones in your body that will promote you feeling better. So. You might be an elite athlete and want to run for an hour every day, or you might be like me where walking is a better form of exercise. Again, just do it with someone who's close to you, one of your friends, your sibling. If you don't want to do a lot in the beginning, just start with something small and just keep doing it together so that they can help to motivate you. Another important thing 
when you're coping with depression is to challenge your negative thoughts. So it can feel as if your head is in a cloud and every single thing you want to do or everything you think about, you think about it in the negative because you're just feeling down and you're not motivated. But challenge yourself and say, okay, I'm telling myself this, but maybe do I need to look at it a different way? Or is there any evidence really that I'm gonna fail at what I'm trying to do? And just help to promote positive thoughts in yourself and again people who are close to you and around you can also help you to be able to work on the things that are getting you down and help you to speak positive into your life. The final and very important thing that I want to mention today is be aware of when you need to seek professional help. So if you've tried on your own and with people close to you, maybe it's somebody at church, somebody at school, to try and get you through your, your dark tunnel, I like to call it, there may be a point where it's just still not getting you back on your feet and you need to seek professional help. So that professional help can come again in a pastoral setting. You might be close to one of the elders or youth workers or um, a pastor at your church. It may be a close friend or neighbor, but there is a point where you may need to get actual professional help. And in those circumstances, we do recommend that you see either your general practitioner or you see if you're at school, maybe the school counsellor or psychologist, and there are other counselling services that you can access. So here at the Seventh-day Adventist Conference, there is an actual counselling helpline and also counselling sessions that you can arrange. And the number for that contact is 9247612. And then also at the main hospital here, there's a helpline specifically just for children, and that number is 6495437. And then you can also access using 2447676. So all of these services are totally confidential, they're free to access. And if you do need to get a referral, there are ways that you can do that through health insurance. But if you do need professional help, don't try to do it on your own. If you were in an accident and you broke your arm, you wouldn't try to duct tape it back together. You would go and seek professional help from the medical professions. And the mind is an organ just like any other part of your body. So there are times when we do need to get um, help in that area as well and that is why we're encouraging you to seek professional help if you need it but the main message that we want to leave with you is that you are not alone and that we can get through this together good evening i invite you to assume an attitude of prayer let us pray most righteous eternal father i thank you for all that you've done i thank you for creating this beautiful world with different type of people I specifically pray now for the youth of the church, not just the youth of the church, but for the youth everywhere, oh God. There are issues that different people face, and for the youth, one prominent one is depression. I ask that you be with those that are facing depression right now, oh God. I ask that you be with them, continue to comfort and guide them. Father, you sent the comforter, and I ask that you help them to know that this is the source of the remedy, O oh God. Sometimes they look to self-harm, and sometimes they look to drugs and other, other things that can't really help them, but I ask that you help them to know that you will always be there for them. I ask that you pray for the causes of these, of depression, O oh God. I ask that you be with the stress and the social issues, the anxiety, and the schoolwork, and all of the problems that they may be facing. God, I thank you for all that you've done. And the youth in this church, we can make a really big difference, oh God. But with hindrance and obstacles like depression, sometimes these things can get in our way. And so we ask that you remove them now, oh God, so that we can do a mighty work for you. In your name we pray, amen. Our title for tonight is, Lord, I will go, fill me. This news deeply affected the world. According to the main communication means, the supermodel of Russian origin, Roshlana Kershenova, had died after falling from the eighth, eighth floor of her apartment in the city of Manhattan. No one could imagine such a thing. This young lady had everything at her feet. Fame, money, influence, and a great future ahead of her. Suddenly, the investigation started. 
her family members refused to believe the version given by the authorities. However, after long investigations, they concluded that the model had taken her life. A close friend, after being interrogated, said that in those days, Kershinova seemed very anguished. Sadly, the anguish took her to a sad end. Unfortunately, just like that young lady, many others experience situations of anguish. The Bible presents a story of a woman that was in anguish, but she found Jesus, Jesus' forgiveness, and purpose for her life. The Gospel of John presents the story that many of us know of a woman who had a special encounter with Jesus. We don't know her name, but she originated from the city of Samaria. She is known as the Samaritan woman. Now, before getting into the story, it is important to understand that the life of Jesus was registered in the first four books of the New Testament, known as the Gospels. The word gospel means good news. Therefore, we can conclude that it contains the good news of salvation through Christ Jesus. As you all know, the fourth gospel is the Gospel of John. Maybe you're asking, who is John? According to the scriptures, John was a young man who, along with his father, was dedicated to the trade of fishing. By nature, he was impulsive and had an explosive character, to the point that he was referred to as the son of thunder, found in Mark 3, verse 17. But one day, his life changed forever. John, known as the son of thunder, came to be the disciple of love. He wrote five books of the New Testament, the Gospel of John, three letters, and the book of Revelation. We can say that John was a living example of the power of God to transform. And it was precisely John who, in chapter four of his gospel, relates the fascinating story of the Samaritan woman. The story starts with Jesus heading to Galilee. But before getting to his destination, he decided to make a stop because he needed to go through Samaria. I think most of you know the conflict that existed between the Jews and the Samaritans. Why this antagonism? The Samaritans were part Jew and part Gentile. Therefore, the Jews considered them as exiles to the point that they despised them. Given this situation, the Samaritans decided to have their own religious system that competed with the religious system of the Jews. Between these two nations, a racial, religious, and a cultural wall was raised. But Jesus came to knock that wall down, found in Ephesians 2 verse 14. As a result, without regard to the existing conflicts between the Jews and the Samaritans, he decided to pass through the city of Samaria. According to the story, Jesus, along with his followers, arrived at Samaria at noon. And while his disciples went to the city to buy something to eat, Jesus sat to rest along the well of Sakar. It's in this moment, the hour of high heat, that woman of the city came to the well to get water for the day's consumption. Jesus initiated the conversation by making a request. He said, will you give me a drink? No, as I have explained earlier, you could imagine this woman's surprise that this Jew is asking her for a cup of water, a drink of water. So she responded, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? The master did not enter into a debate. Instead, in a direct way, he said, if you knew the gift of God 
and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. John 4 verse 10. It's interesting to note that when, when the woman saw Jesus, she identified him as a simple outsider. We note that she said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? The Samaritan woman saw in Jesus a common and ordinary itinerant, which is someone who travels from place to place. But as she continued to talk with Jesus, her perspective changes, and she begins to see him as a great leader. The Samaritan woman said to Jesus, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and livestock? Jesus wanted the woman to have a deep knowledge of the spiritual things, which is why he said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I will give them will become in them a spring of water welling to eternal life. Now, when she heard she would never thirst again, I would assume that she was only thinking of the physical water that Jesus was referring to. So when faced with the offer, the woman exclaimed, Sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. However, before continuing, the Lord makes a revelation. He said, Go call your husband and come back. The woman responded and said, I have no husband. To which Jesus said, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man that you have now, he is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Before such revelation, the woman concludes, this man is more than an outsider. He is more than a leader. This man is a prophet. She said, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. It was at this moment that Jesus, that prepared Jesus to give the greatest of all revelations. When the woman realized that she was in front of a simple mortal is when she declares, I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. John 4 verse 25. And it's at this moment when she hears the voice of the master say, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Friends, Jesus Christ revealed himself to this poor and anguished woman as the Messiah. As we hear these words, immediately the story tells us that leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? The Samaritan woman understood that Jesus was more than a mortal, more than a great leader, more than a prophet. She understood that Jesus was the promised Messiah. And not only did she understand him also, but she accepted him in her heart. Friends, this story is very emotional, and it teaches us abundant and rich lessons. But there are various points to which I would like to highlight. Firstly, only those that recognize who Jesus is can experience their transformation of their lives. The Samaritan woman had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, and Thanks to that encounter, her life was changed. All those who have a personal encounter with Christ will experience a change. The Samaritan woman was distressed, 
sad, empty, and hopeless. But when she encountered the master, joy, happiness, and hope filled her experience. Allow me to tell you that the same will happen with your life. Someone said that where Jesus passes, something happens. Secondly, from this story, I would like to specify that when someone encounters Jesus, they simply can't remain silent. What did the Samaritan woman do when Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah? She went to tell others. Ellen White in the book, Desire of Ages, page 195 wrote, as soon as she had found the Savior, the Samaritan woman brought others to him. She proved herself a more effective missionary than his own disciples. This woman represents the working of a practical faith in Christ. Every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. He who drinks of the living water becomes the fountain of life. The receiver becomes the giver. The grace of Christ in the soul is like a spring in the desert, welling up to refresh all and making those who are ready to perish eager to drink of the water of life. When you have an encounter with Jesus, and drink off the water of life, you will have a living desire to tell others of the great wonders of God. The Lord Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He, be he that believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. It has been told that Juan Napoli, Naponi, sorry, was fishing salmons in a place that was about 27 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. Early in the afternoon, he filled his boat and initiated his trip back home. A little more than one mile from the bay that opens behind the bridge, Naponi saw alarmed hundreds of human heads going up and down in the waves. He was able to see part of the boat that had just sunk in shallow water. His eyes filled with tears. His eyes was filled with tears, seeing so many people that were trying to fight to stay afloat. And he said, I must save as much, as much people as possible, he thought to himself, and he started to work. His boat was only in one area. There were survivors everywhere that begged to be saved, for which Napole Napoli worked as fast as he could. He threw the salmons that he had fished earlier into the ocean, which were valued at $3,000 to make room for more people. After six hours of hard work, he had rescued 54 people. Since there were still people in the water, the fisherman threw a rope on which 16 people grabbed on, which he towed to the bridge. When the Samaritan woman met with Jesus, she said the same thing as Juan Napoli. She said, I must save as many people as I can. Friends, I would like to conclude saying that the day that you experience a real encounter with Jesus, you can't remain silent. Also, we will say the same. I must save as many people as I can. Now I want you to repeat with me. I must save 
as many people as I can. Around us, there are thousands of anguished and hopeless people. They need to hear that, God, that Jesus heals and saves. But someone has to say it. We can't say, stay silent. Today, tonight, I invite you to drink off the water of life so that you can become a channel of blessing to the world. Rise up, rise up right now and say, Lord, give me of the water of life. Make me a river of blessing for those who perish without hope. Help me to say that you are the hope for us that are in anguish. I assure you that the day you drink of the water of life, as with the Samaritan woman, you too will say, Lord, I will go. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for bringing us here tonight to tell us about your word, dear Lord. I hope that each of us here tonight will take what the message has said and spread the gospel to those who are in need, those who are hopeless, those who are anguished, dear Lord. I ask you for someone to bring the word to them, to know that there is hope. There is hope in you, Father. Please, can you continue to guide and protect us? Let us be missionaries of your word, dear Lord. Continue to guide and protect us this night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into our Youth Week of Prayer. We hope that you have been blessed by this experience with us. If you have any questions or would you need to speak to someone, please contact us at 949-2647. Again, that number is 949-2647. Or you can visit our website at caymanadventist.org. Before you go, however, fun fact. Did you know that there is power in speaking words out loud? Yes, there is. And with that being said, I want you to say something out loud with me. You ready? Lord, I am who you say I am. Help me to walk in it. I want to do what you say I can do. Give me the strength to commit, to choose to abide in your grace and experience love alive. Not to just exist and survive, but rather to live and thrive.